It might not be the flashiest or the most up-to-date cutting edge version of the iPad, but the brand new iPad generation nine is no slouch. And at this price point, it comes with some very exciting and key features. So how has mine held up over the past couple of weeks? Let's find out. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. This release cycle has definitely had a lot of exciting technology in it, from the tiny mini iPad, to the smaller, yet so much bigger feeling iPhone 13 Pro Max, but I think when the dust settles, we'll have all realized that the humble, yet powerful iPad standard was really the most useful update in the whole bunch. If you have not memorized what the iPad Generation 8 is, and you are curious about the differences between the Generation 8 and the Generation 9, let's quickly go through the specs and ordering options to get us all marching to the same drummer. I'm trying to, you may have noticed, I'm trying to think of other things to say instead of always saying, hey, let's get on the same page. The iPad Generation 9 can be had in its base model 64 gigabyte configuration for $329. At this price, you'll get the very familiar looking iPad body, a 10.2 inch non-laminated retina display, the A13 Bionic chip, the same rear camera as last year, but a much upgraded front facing ultra wide camera, the nicely placed home button with Touch ID built in, and a reported 10 hours of battery life. Life. And one of the funny, one of the funny things is that here, this is like the cheapest Apple thing that you can buy and you'll still get the 20 watt fast charger in the box. There are a few customization options that you can choose from. You can pick either space gray or silver for the color and you can upgrade the storage to 256 gigabytes for $479. A cellular version is also available for about $130 more depending on the size of the hard drive you get. Besides that, yeah, it's an iPad. See that? That's an iPad. So let's get to the things that I've liked and disliked after the last couple of weeks. And because I really like the standard iPads, let's start off with the positives. Much like it's hard to talk about the iPhone 13 Pro Max and not talk battery life, it's hard to talk about the iPad Generation 9 and not start off with the price. $329 is a crazy value in the tech world. You can't buy anything these days for that amount of money without it literally falling apart the second you touch it. I know I catch a lot of flack in my comment section and on Twitter when I say that I disagree there is an Apple tech anymore and this well it's not officially called the se line but personally i call all of these budget devices se and i personally think that that se line is the best value in all of Tectum. You can get a phone, tablet, computer. There's a whole SE line of stuff that just, you get so much power, reliability, and features in devices that cost roughly the same for the past few years. It's so good. And this is the single lineup that gets to benefit from all of the cutting edge R&D that goes into those higher end models and it slowly gets trickled down here. So you pay the same, but you get all those advancements. We'll talk more about some of those specific features in a second, but let's take a moment to appreciate that this comes with the A13, which debuted on the iPhone 11 line. That wasn't all that long ago. You used to need to spend a ton of money to get that processor, and now, boom, 329 bucks, you get it. Samsung does have the Tab A series, which also looks to be a great value, but for me or recommending somebody building an Apple ecosystem, this is the first device that I would recommend to buy. The next thing that I've liked over the past week is that brand new ultra wide angle front facing camera. I would argue that this is the biggest update from the Gen 8 to the Gen 9, and yes, for me, it's a pretty big deal. When we talk about the iPad 7 to 8, they were pretty much just an internal spec bump from one processor to the other, and while that's nice to have, it didn't really have a killer feature that said, Gary, you go out there and you buy me. But this, yes, this camera is that for the 8 to 9 jump. This f2.8 aperture 12 megapixel camera has a 122 degree field of view and works in tandem with Apple's center stage feature. This means that if you are in the frame by yourself, it will zoom in and keep on you as you move throughout the frame by intelligently cropping that image. If you do have somebody else in the frame, it will doesn't actually zoom out, but it like digitally zooms out to show you both and keep you both in the frame as best as possible. I love this. I unequivocally love this. When it was originally debuted on the M1 iPad Pro, I was kind of lukewarm about it, but I got to tell you, in the months following its release and the more and more I use it, this is easily, center stage is easily one of my favorite software features from Apple. This allows these tiny little cheap tablets to be whole video conferencing systems where you used to need huge room-like contraption, an entire team can use this as their collaboration tool. And while yes, I think the iPad mini is better in that specific regard, I think the iPad generation nine is the better overall iPad. And again, that you can get this pretty stellar camera in a $329 body is just the cherry on the top. And I know, I know a lot of us tech nerds or gadget gurus or whatever you wanna call us, we think this is an outdated design that's super boring, but Apple sells a ton of these 
for that same reason. And I've personally used an older model of this as an on the go briefing device. That it's so much better for that purpose with this updated camera is so good. I just get really pumped talking about it. Another thing that I've liked about this updated standard iPad is much like the standard iPhone 13 lineup, you get double the storage for the same amount of money as before. So like you heard in the spec overview, instead of 32 gigabytes of storage like we got last year, now the base model comes with 64 gigabytes. That might sound like a small bump, but if I was going to say that there was an Apple tax, it's in their storage and active memory costs. So that we get double for the same price. I'm pretty happy about that. 32 gigabytes of memory was a pretty hard sell in 2020. I think there are adapters and like toys that have more storage than that. And while 64 gigabytes is still kind of low, it's not as unusable as 32 gigabytes would have been if they'd tried pulling that on the generation nine. I think most folks with this iPad will not need all that much memory as it will be used as an ancillary device or you'll use iCloud if it's a primary device. And even for me personally, Mr. Making YouTube videos all the time, I only have 47 gigabytes of footage on my iPhone. And this is my primary family photo and video camera. So I think 64 is fine. Yes, 128 gigabytes would be nice, but that would increase the price. And the real standout feature of the iPad is its price point. The next thing I've liked about the iPad is the chassis of the tablet itself. Yes, it's the exact same as last year. And that's, I mean, as the saying goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Like we said earlier, for the price, this feels like a high quality tablet. You'll get a full metal construction. Listen to this. Can you hear that? You get full metal construction where other devices at this price point would probably be more on the plastic side. You get an actual physical touch ID sensor, which let's be frank, that's the single best authentication method on an Apple device. Other iPads do have touch ID, but they had to do some design magic to make it work. And they have it set to the lock button, which while functional, it's not nearly as convenient as just being able to tap on the screen and you're good to go. A big chunk of the reason that I keep buying these standard iPads is I'm trying to like, I'm trying to signal to Apple that yes, this is good. Plus for that $300 asking price, you get a very nice looking retina panel that also goes up to 500 nits of brightness. Now that might sound like a lot compared to the insanity of the thousand nit panels in the iPad Pro lineup, but remember, my MacBook Air only has a 400 nit panel. This screen will be sharp, color accurate, and you'll be able to see it pretty much in every place except direct sunlight. And you also get the other best Apple feature in the smart connector built into the side. No, you can't get one of those actual magic keyboards here, but the smart folio that does work with the iPad is workable if you need a word processing device. And last but not least on the physical layout, you also get a headphone jack. When was the last time you heard that? And not just on an iPad, but on any device. It definitely seems like brands are moving towards a portless future to make all this mobile tech as small as possible. But you gotta love that it's still included on this iPad. The next thing I've liked has been the A13 processor. No, I'm not a tech benchmarker, especially for tablets or mobile devices, but putting in the same chip from the iPhone 11 line is another great move towards longevity. Like I said in the Gen 8 video, when it comes to these tablets, yes, power can be important, especially if you wanna use this as a design device or as a media creation platform. And all the recent iPads have been surprisingly capable in that regards. But in a more practical setting, these yearly processor upgrades really give you another several years of product updates. I swear, this is how software updates should go. I don't even really wanna give Apple top marks here because if you make hardware, you should give software updates as long as the device is physically capable of running it. I mean, we got those leaks of extended updates for the new rumored Google Pixel and Twitter went wild because it's what, like six years? Great job for getting into the present. I think going forward that I won't consider this a positive for any brand, but if a brand holds back on software updates or keeps them at like a two year schedule, I will start labeling that as a very big deal breaker and a huge negative in my recommendation for these videos. Gary, hey Gary, you that's an awful lot of positive stuff. What haven't you liked over the past couple of weeks? Okay, other Gary, what's there to dislike? Seriously, what is there to dislike on this tablet? Really, the design is the only thing to point out here. And yes, it is old, and I wish there was a snazzier looking fully laminated display option, but that would increase the price or it would cause sacrifices somewhere else. That's how product design works. This iPad is like the Honda Civic of the tablet world. It's not the fanciest, but it's built like a tank and will probably outlast us all for updates and runtime. If you are looking at buying the cheapest Apple computer, you know what you're getting into. And it's not like anything is hidden during the purchase process to make you not realize what kind of a tablet you are getting. So it's not built perfectly, but it's a perfect combination of price, performance, and usability. But at the end of the day, so what, right? Do I like the iPad generation nine? Yes, absolutely. I'm a 
huge fan and a huge proponent of the budget Apple SE lineup. From the phones to the watches, I think this is the best budget total ecosystem that you can find on the market period. Do I recommend you upgrade from the generation eight to the generation nine? I wouldn't consider that like a default position to take. I would say upgrade tablets if you really want that new ultra wide front facing camera. If you don't need or care about that, then I would stick with what you got. Do I recommend this over other iPads? If you are trying to save the most amount of money possible, yes, I easily recommend this. And I recommend this over the iPad mini unless you specifically need that form factor. If you have the budget for it, I would probably recommend the iPad Air 4 over this, but that is a few hundred dollars more and maybe that needs a video by itself. Bottom line, the iPad keeps getting better and better every year. And I'm so thankful that these still exist when Apple could easily cut it and push people towards higher and more expensive machines. And if you like this video and you're like, okay, Gary, let's see what other iPad stuff you got. Well, good news. I've got my latest video about the iPad mini that you can find by clicking right here. Click, 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 click. Thanks for watching.